Hello and welcome to Euchromedia.com. My name is Sergey Proknevsky and today I'm going to show you how to create this reflection in After Effects that you can pretty much apply not only text but also any other objects, pictures and things of that nature. And uh, we'll also take it a step further and we'll uh, I'll show you how to set this up, like make it um, interact with your camera like this. I'm moving the camera around and the reflection uh, interacts with it as well. You can also uh, animate the reflection by itself uh, and also we'll add little highlights here. We'll, we'll create the, the text from scratch and things of that nature. So let's dive right in. All right, so we're going to start out by creating a new composition and I'll click on this icon to do so and I'll just label this reflection. Uh, and I'm going to bring in a background element that I've already created. In fact, you can download this whole project at uh, ucromedia.com. So that's good. Uh, and let's do text next. So let's bring in uh, ucromedia and I'll do control alt home to center my pivot point, control home to center the text. And right away you can tell that this text is looking flat. So uh, we need to bring a little more personality to it. So let's bring right click layer styles and do gradient overlay. And inside gradient overlay, let's play with some options here. Let's make it not as dark. Maybe I want it to be kind of dark on the edges and bring in a new color in the center here. And I want to brighten it up. Maybe like so. And maybe not as dark around the edges. Probably good. So that's done. And as you can see, it's already given you a little like a linear highlight. Um, which is good. And then next, I want to put um, color over the top of this. And you know, some I know some people do color in here, but I think it's too much work. So normally what I do is just bring in a um, layer styles color overlay. And this is where I select my color. And in this case, I'll just paste my orange. And blending mode, I normally use, by the way, blending mode is how you put this color over the top of your gradient. So you can either do overlay, but I don't like the white highlight that it gives. So I like the hard light. It kind of gives me this orange looking highlight, which is what I'm going for. So that's good. Next, uh, I want to work on the edges because the edges are looking a little flat. And normally in 3D, there'll be um, there'll be like a ramp around the edges because it's beveled. So let's let's bring in uh, to do that. Let's do like a layer style um, and uh, let's do inner glow. So inside inner glow, we can play with some options here, and we can adjust the um, like uh, the size of it so maybe this much something like that and i don't want it to be white i want in fact to be darker color so and obviously this screen doesn't work so you can change it maybe let's do like overlay and you can tell that it's already darkening if you turn it off you can see that it's doing something to the edges so and you can adjust the the color here you know, you know obviously the darker you go the more saturated and dark dark it gets around the edges so this is good and right away you can see that it has some personality now next what I want is to create that 3d pop like I want some highlight around the edges and to do that I'll just do right click layer styles and bevel and bevel will give you that so you can already see there's a highlight but it's too thick of a highlight so let's take it down to maybe two pixels and that's good I just want to highlight but I want pretty strong highlight in fact but I don't want it to be white because uh, it's it's not going to do well with the white background that we're going to create. So I'm going to maybe introduce a little brighter orange, like almost yellowish. So something like this is good. And on the bottom here, I think it's too dark. So let's change it to 50%. All right. I think, I think we're pretty much there for the inner part of this text. So next what I'll do, I'll just duplicate what we've, we've created and put on the bottom here. And, uh, I'll label this, I don't know, text background. <laughs> and basically it's just a stroke around this text. It's gonna be that white stroke. So let's do, um, let's solo this and just see what kind of options we can alter in here. So first of all, we're gonna change the color. It's not gonna be orange anymore. So let's take it down to maybe grayish color like this. And I don't need that uh, yellow highlight anymore. So I'm going to uh, my uh, bevel option here and I'll change it to white. So right away you can see that it's looking pretty good. Um, and we might, maybe I don't need uh, the highlight in the middle anymore. So let's maybe go to gradient overlay here and edit a bit some, maybe take it down the brightness slightly. Okay, I think that's probably good. And I don't want it to be dark around the edges. In fact, I want it to be brighter. So let's go to inner glow and change the value to brighter, something like this. 
So it's a little different looks, but if you turn it back on, you won't see it because it's hiding behind it, but let's give it a little stroke around it. And to do that, we'll just select the, the, ba the background here and uh, just give it some color, like I'll do white. It doesn't matter what color you give here because we already, uh, we're giving it he uh, the colors here. So, you know, if you give it, to, I don't know, red, it's not gonna be red here. So that's good. I like actually, I'm gonna keep it at 14 pixels, but you can adjust your stroke. So that's good. But right away you can see that the two are competing with each other. There's, it's just blending and it's not looking good. So let's, let's uh, introduce like a shadow uh, around, like separate the two. So I'm going to select this text and do layer style and uh, shadow, drop shadow. And in here, we'll go to drop shadow and I'll adjust it. Uh, let's do distance, I'll do all the way zero. And we can play around the size. Basically, I'm just trying to create um, separation between the two. So maybe something like this isn't bad. And we can also go back uh, to something. I mean, it's still competing a little bit. So let's hold on. Let's go into this one. And for the color overlay, let's change it to darker value. Yeah, that's probably better. Like this, maybe. Okay, and I think the reflection will play a part. But also, next, uh, I I created a little texture because it's kind of looking flat. This background element texture that um, is in this background, let me open it up. As you can see, this these lines, let me copy them, Control-C, and then bring them into this comp here. Um, if you put it over the top, I used it as a texture for the background, or for the text. It kind of gave it a bit more personality. So let's, I'm going to duplicate this inner uh, inner text and then put it over the top here. And then I'm going to erase all the layers, uh, layer styles. So basically it's just flat again. But it's going to be basically my mask. And I'll do Luma mask in here. And it'll, it'll basically use uh, put the lines inside the text. So that's good. Um, and in here we can kind of, it's already got overlay blending mode, but let's maybe take it down a notch, maybe like 35, just a slight little texture in there or something, something to make it look not as flat, maybe down even more, 30. So that's pretty much it, um, but let, let's uh, focus next on creating the reflection and then the highlights. Okay, so to create the reflection, we'll bring in a new solid. So you can do right click here, new solid, and then make it comp size and hit OK. But I already have one created here. So let's just drag that in here. Okay, and I'll just draw, using my ellipse tool, I'm just going to draw a sh the shape of the reflection um, that I want and something curved like so. Uh, that's good. And th it created a mask here. Let's label this reflection. In fact, let's do this mask. Okay. And uh, so here's my mask. Uh, and then I'm going to control D, duplicate it again, and then I'll subtract it. So basically, as you can see, it just, it's just a one little pixel, one pixel thin line. But if you hit M twice, if you adjust the feathering option of the second mask, if you just pull on it like this, you can see that it's creating what we want. So I'm going to do like 120 or so. So it's creating like a little feathering there, but it, it's it's very interesting looking. Like you can tell it's a ref, it's like a reflection. But um, how do we mask it out? Uh, so I'll just duplicate this mask that we use for the texture. So Control D and put it on top here, and just do Alpha Mat. And if you solo it, you can see that it puts that right all over the text. So that's good. Uh, but you can also for the mask, you can use the blending mode here, and you know different ones will give you a different look. But uh, I'm just going to use Add and it gives you a nice little highlight, but it's too strong, so I'm gonna hit uh, Shift T to bring opacity here, and I'll take it down some, maybe maybe 50. That might be too strong, so like 40 maybe, but uh, it's definitely to your taste, it's subjective really, but um, it's sometimes you know the reflection competes with it, so maybe even more like 30. Ah, uh, let's do 35. <laughs> anyway, so that's done. But um, another thing you can do, you can also introduce colors. So I can type in like fill and do like a fill to the reflection itself. And sometimes you can, you know, give it like a different color and it'll give you a different reflection color. So that's that's kind of nice. Uh, but I'm going to hold on to the just white look. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the reflection. 
Uh, but here's another thing you can do to it. So let's say, what if it, my text is static and I want to animate the reflection? So you can grab like a mask here and, you know, keyframe it and move it around. But the thing is the bottom one, this one's not moving with this one. So how do you parent it? So to do that, just hold alt and stop, uh, click on the stopwatch for path and then just parent it to this path. And now when you select the first one and move it around, the, the other one moves with it. So now what you can do with it is, uh, hit a keyframe here and like, you know, go here somewhere and then move it where you want it to be. And then when you play it, the reflection is animated. So that's good, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm actually wanting for the reflection to interact with my scene when I move the camera. So let's, let me show you how to set, set that up. So now we've created everything we need pretty much. So next what we'll do is make our, so the mask, reflection, you know, the other mask, the background, all this basically will make it 3D. So that way when we uh, do new uh, new camera uh, and hit C to orient, by the way, I'm gonna turn this uh, off for, for 3D right now because it lags the system. So, but if you're moving around, you can see that everything is moving, but here's a problem, the reflection is not moving. And the reason why it's not moving uh, because it's on the same plane as the text. So what you need to do, just select the reflection and, uh, and move it back some. And in fact, you can select the reflection, hit P on your keyboard and Z value is what you're looking for. So like take it back like a hundred pixels. And so now uh, when you move around, the reflection moves with it. You can do the same thing for, you know, you can do an image reflection, whatever. So that's basically it for the reflection part. So let's next, let's tackle the little highlights um, like a flares and stuff. Okay, so to create the uh, the highlights, um, we'll need to bring a new solid. So I'm just gonna bring it from here. And I'll use optical flares here. So flares, and you don't have to use flares. You can use, uh, you can create your own like a little flare, but I just like using flares because it's so simple and easy. Uh, so I'm gonna erase everything they give me. And all I want is just this one right here. And I'll play with, with the options here. I mean, technically you can use that, but I like, I like this better. Uh, so something like this might work. Um, let's see. I like that because it gives more ramp, you know, more uh, highlight. And let's do on transparent and let's make it add mode, okay? And I'll label this flare one. And right away you can see that, let's put one like right here. It's probably too thick. Let's take it down, maybe like the brightness down to maybe 70%. Uh, it's actually not too bad. Now uh, let's do like 60. Let's do 70, but let's bring in a little color. Sometimes like white looks whiter if, if it's slightly bluish. And, uh, okay. And let's take it down like 65. So we got like a first highlight here. And, um, Next, I'll just duplicate what I just created. And this one, I will put right here at the bottom. And maybe I will, let me see, maybe I will take it down some like 50. I don't want to be too powerful there. So as you can see, it creates little highlights uh, and sometimes that's what you want. Let's do this one 60 as well. But uh, what's cool about this one is that it sticks, it sticks with, um, with your object. So like when you move around in 3D space, by the way, you have to make these 3D and it'll be on the same plane. So when you move it around, it stays there, but here's a problem. Like if you notice that the, the highlight kind of the solid ends there, so it, it's kind of noticeable there. So what you need to do, um, like here's our first one. I'm just gonna draw a mask around it, like hit it here, do alt, um, you know, draw like a sphere around it, like so maybe. And then just do, do double M and do feathering like a 200 or something like that. And so that fixed it for that. And then you can just control C and paste it for this one here and just grab it and move it to right to that spot here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, if you move it around, everything's fixed. So yeah. All right, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you found it useful. Uh, just a reminder, you can download this project file at ukremedia.com. And by the way, there are more content on my website 
things like podcasts that, that you can listen to. So uh, be sure to check it out. And thank you so much again for watching. Uh, like this video, share it, uh, subscribe to YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. Thank you again, guys. Have a good one.